This is an image from Yorgos Lanthimos' debut feature, Dogtooth, a machine of a film which introduces Lanthimos' new filmic ontology to denaturalise the construction process of barbaric modern myth. This is the child of the film's patriarch, not children, but child, brutalised and maimed by the cinematic form, bodies at war with an intuition of agency, whilst merely fleshy cogs formed in the image of a barbaric machine. A machine driven only by the incestuous cycle of the insular inheritance of an illusory farce of self-preservation. We are shown the construction of this capital, the process of meaning production, and the war between concrete and nature in time and space, whilst characters appear as limp puppets cruelly prodded through state-sanctioned torture by the haunting coding network of ideology. In the work of Yorgos Lanthimos, the very form and devices of cinema itself, that is, razor-sharp frame borders prone to mechanise any glimpses of human signification in the body, deep focus long shots that coldly encrust dehumanised forms in contrasting milieus of superficial opulence and decaying urban wastelands. And duration, long takes which render life as an endurance test against the endlessly simulacral paraphernalia of pre-written domesticity. These often standardised features of filmic form all make themselves visible to the viewer, and in this, a subversively universal language of resistance enlightens the subject of Western late capitalism to the farce of their own complicit subjecthood to tyranny. This video essay intends to serve as a demonstration of the manner in which Lanthimos's use of film form facilitates a vibrant dialogue with a philosophical history of reflections upon late capitalism. <laughs> both that capitalism is a hyper-abstract, impersonal structure and that it would be nothing without our cooperation. The most gothic description of capital is also the most accurate. Capital is an abstract parasite, an insatiable vampire and zombie maker, but the living flesh it converts into dead labour is ours and the zombies it makes are us. Do you have the time? One sometimes encounters what may be called situations or states of domination, in which the power relations, instead of being mobile, allowing for the various participants to adopt strategies modifying them, remain blocked, frozen. One is faced with what may be called a state of domination. In such a state, it is certain that practices of freedom do not exist or exist only unilaterally or are extremely constrained and limited. There are no desiring machines that exist outside the social machines that they form on a large scale and no social machines without the desiring machines that inhabit them on a small scale. As for expression and feelings or emotions, 
the liberation in contemporary society from the older anime of the centred subject may also mean not merely a liberation from anxiety, but a liberation from every other kind of feeling as well, since there is no longer a self present to do the feeling. Please, don't you stop. It feels like paradise. Kevin. Please. Don't you stop, it feels like heaven. Today became erect quicker than on other days. That's good. Please, just a little longer. Have a good day. That's awful. Just awful. How's that? Perfect. This waning of affect might also have been characterised as the waning of the great high modernist thematics of time and temporality, the elegiac mysteries of durée and of memory. Cultural objects, as elsewhere the objects of consumption, have no other end than to maintain you in a state of mass integration, of transistorized flux, of a magnetized molecule. Every stock is violent. And there is a specific violence in any mass of people also, because of the fact that it implodes, a violence proper to its gravitation, to its densification around its own locus of inertia. The masses are a locus of inertia, and through that a locus of a completely new, inexplicable violence, different from explosive violence. Please place your hand in the cluster. This could be a warning. I've been good otherwise. He's going to eat them right now. Often acknowledging site specific context as a filmmaker who emerged from the primordial dystopia of the Greek financial crash, yet gesturing more broadly within the scope of his parallel constructed worlds to the very cultural logic capable of such absurd and self-annihilatory phenomena, Yorgos Lanthimos plays God, or, in other words, the conjurer of mythology. He elects himself as the faceless dictator of his doll's house diegesis, and through the cruel traits of the cinematic form, pushes stunted bodies to their extreme. What emerges through absurdist humour and brutal masochism is a system of parody that points with unmistakable spectacle to the dirty secrets of our cultural coding. Human forms become toys, propped up by deadened limbs of capital, and language cuts inwardly to its shallow core. In this symbolist language of masticated realism, the potency of hegemony dissolves. For myth encounters nothing but betrayal in language, for language can only obliterate the concept if it hides it, or unmask it 
if it formulates it. 